Mary had a little lamb, her fleece was white as snow. You know that old nursery rhyme, probably read it to your kids. But let's go back for a moment to 1877, when that rhyme came out of that speaker, voiced by Thomas Edison. This was remarkable. It seemed absolutely magical. No one had heard sound recording before. Edison, of course, was one of the greatest inventors, if not the greatest, who ever lived. But this invention, the phonograph, was actually stimulated by Alexander Graham Bell's invention of the telephone. Uh, the telephone, of course, simple principle back then, it worked with your voice vibrating air, that vibrated a diaphragm, that generated electric current, and that's how the message was transmitted. But Edison had an idea. How about taking a diaphragm, attaching it to a needle, and having that needle etch a groove into a cylinder to try to record the voice, and playback would just go in reverse. The needle would follow the groove, and it would vibrate the diaphragm attached to the speaker. The question was, how do you make some substance onto which you can record? Well, the original idea was tin foil, but it broke very easily. And then Edison gave that job to one of his chemists, who came up with a wax. And what we have here is a cylinder that has not yet been recorded. It's just pure, smooth wax. Now, in order to record sound, what you would do would be to place that cylinder on a machine like this, speak into the speaker, and as it turned, a needle would etch a groove into the cylinder. And when you wanted to play it back, you would do exactly the reverse. The needle would trace the groove, vibrate a diaphragm, and sound would come out. The trouble was that the wax did not keep very well, it didn't last very long. So some new material was needed. Well, luckily, celluloid was invented. Celluloid, uh, interesting material made out of um, cellulose and reacting that with nitric and sulfuric acid, interesting stuff. And uh, you know about celluloid because it was used to make all kinds of interesting objects like this, this comb. So celluloid cylinders were born and they were somewhat better than the wax cylinders, but they didn't, still didn't last very long. The next breakthrough was a material called Bakelite. I have a nice little Bakelite die here. And this goes back to 1906. Well, you could use this plastic material to make cylinders as well. Those cylinders were better, they were harder, they would keep for a longer time. And uh, eventually, unfortunately, Edison's uh, cylindrical recordings uh, were replaced by uh, these. Some of you may remember these records, originally made of shellac, then made of polyvinyl chloride or PVC. And then those, of course, were replaced by CDs. Incidentally, if you want to see a good movie, that's a really good one. And then the CDs were replaced by, well, electronics in the air, Wi-Fi, etc. But let me take you back for a moment to that magical day in 1877 when people, for the first time, heard sound coming out of a machine like this. Not exactly high fidelity, and no, there's no volume to turn up, but enjoy the fascinating science behind Edison's phonograph, celluloid, bakelite, and all the magic that chemistry brings you.